Hello, I'm Danny DeHeck, aka the Crypto Ponzi Scheme Avenger. Some great news. A scammer by the name of Stephen McCullough was trying to sue me in the New Zealand High Court for $3.8 million. Chickened out. Now, this is ridiculous, and I want to show you something. Now, yesterday, a good friend of mine, Rob, came around and we sat down and we did a video together explaining the introduction to a series of videos that I'm about to do. Rob rang me in the morning. He said, we forgot the main point. And I said, no, I think we covered it. But I just want to make sure we did. The video that you're about to watch, I'm only going to do this introduction for about 10 minutes. I'm going to rattle off some real juicy information. So please do subscribe, hit the bell, be notified, and you'll be notified when new videos come out to help support my YouTube channel and get these videos out to expose these scammers. Now I've got that out of the way, I want to play you a couple of snippets of videos that we go into details with with Rob and Danny, um, but I just think they're worth pointing out. So the first one is probably this statement here by Stephen McCullough in December 2020. Be bringing them into the situation. Don't pick a fight with a bull if you don't want to deal with the consequences. We right, so we did pick a fight with a bull. It was like David and Goliath. And I want to show you how cowardly this bull uh, acted when he was challenged by someone who th he thought he I couldn't defend myself and he was wrongly um, exposed. So we've got a one minute and 25 minute um, recording that Stephen made 12 hours after he dropped the $3.8 million court case. And it's you've got to listen to this and I'm going to let it play right from start to finish. So here we go. We in no way lost anything. Um, he did not win anything. We did not lose anything. Um, so what happened was he got a public defender and what our lawyer said was like an unprecedented action. Um, he got a public defender and which ended up being like three or four lawyers, um, like $300 an hour lawyers to uh, defend him on the government's dime. So basically it was us against the New Zealand government. And uh, the, the reason that uh, we withdrew was because we knew that um, under the circumstances it was going to be a lot easier to go ahead and bring that suit into a another jurisdiction, which we're doing right now. And uh, it's, it's really in a point where uh, he's going to have a big surprise waiting for him. Um, but uh, no, I mean, in, in no way did we lose anything. We, we, we threw the case in New Zealand because it was a, I mean, it was an absolute, it was going to be an absolute massive, long fight under their, under their legal system. Whereas uh, under a different jurisdiction, it would be much easier and uh, it would be a, a much simpler um, scenario. So that was what our legal team decided. What a load of rubbish, Stephen. You're talking through a hole in your head. Um, let me explain a public defender. We don't have public defenders in New Zealand, so let's address that first. I'm just going to read half this. A public defender is a lawyer who is appointed by the government to provide legal representation to individuals who cannot afford to hire their own attorney. Public defenders are typically responsible for representing clients who are facing criminal charges and are unable to afford private legal counsel. So let's just stop it there. First of all, this was a civil case, not a uh, legal case. This was two gentlemen having a bit of a squabble over some videos where he didn't like me exposing him as a scammer. In New Zealand, the legal system operates differently from some other countries, such as the United States, where public defenders are commonly used. In New Zealand, individuals who cannot afford legal representation can apply for legal aid. The Legal Services Agency, LSA, is responsible for administering legal aid services in the country. So basically, it doesn't matter, you can use any lawyer you like as long as they're registered for legal aid. It just means I got some financial help because I was going up against a big bull. So let's just read the rest of this so we can get this horrible text out of the way. Please stay with me because this is going to get exciting. Under the legal aid system in New Zealand, if an individual meets the eligibility criteria, they can receive funding to hire a lawyer from a list of approved legal aid providers. These lawyers are not necessarily public defenders but rather private lawyers who accept legal aid cases. The lawyers are paid by the LSA for their services on behalf of the client to qualify for legal aid. 
you generally need to meet specific financial eligibility criteria, which take into account factors such as your income, assets, and expenses. If you meet the criteria, you may be eligible for full or partial legal aid, depending on your circumstances. It's important to note that even if you qualify for legal aid, you may still be required to contribute towards the cost of your legal representation. The amount of your contribution will depend on your income and other relevant factors. Right, so for Stephen to say that I got the New Zealand government um, fighting my legal case against him is just so wrong, it's stupid. My lawyers are brilliant. I have to, I didn't, this wasn't a get out of jail free card. I have to pay and contribute towards my legal fees when I go up against this bull, as you know. So I just want to show you a bit of a background. This is a file that I have on Stephen McCullough. My lawyers and everyone associated with a $3.8 million lawsuit have full access to all this information. Now, I have every document, every voice uh, note, everything that's been going on for the last four and a half years since this guy has been scamming. So if you go into my voice recordings, Oops, um, you'll see that I've got every recording that he has made over the last uh, four and a half years that is online on Telegram groups, right through to anything that I basically want. And then not only that, Stephen, we, we've got this information, and if you've got any information, feel free to give it to me and we'll put it in the database, because I'm going to take this guy out, because he come after me like a bull trying to... to um, you know, stop me producing videos, thinking that he could throw money at me and I couldn't defend myself. Well, look at me now. I'm defending myself. So as you can see, I've got screenshots, I've got video recordings, I've got the whole history of everything that Stephen McCullough has been doing. But it gets more exciting than that, ladies and gentlemen, because I'm about to do a series of videos. If we go into the other section, which most people don't see, we can see all the court documents. I can see all the well, I've got access because they are mine, the legal letters from his lawyers to my lawyers. And some of the stuff here is absolutely breathtaking. For example, we've got Natalie who claimed to be a lawyer working for Stephen. She wrote a letter to uh, every government department in New Zealand trying to defame me, saying that I have lost, um, not lost, that I am not eligible for legal aid because I was trying to take the money to, so I couldn't pay my lawyers um, away by complaining to every government organisation in New Zealand. And that's what Rob and I discuss in the in the video that's about to start. Um, so first of all, I mean, I'm not going to go into it now. We're going to do videos about this. But there was an anonymous letter sent to every government organisation from what we found out afterwards is Natalie. Then she made it official and she sent it to the lawyers. Then we corresponded with... Um, their lawyers, and we basically said, my lawyers said to their lawyers, we require your client's explanation, explanation to why Miss, I'm going to just get it to read because it's no good me doing it. We require your client's explanation as to why Ms. Natalie Zeha has challenged our client's grant of legal aid. Dear Joshua, I will take instructions. Regards. So they tried to stop my legal aid. As I said, they complained to every organisation. One of the most shocking things they did is they said I was a terrorist threat to my own country and because we had a terrorist attack here with 51 people murdered, that I was involved in that. This is the extent that they went to. So their lawyers, after reading this, th this is what Stephen McCullough's lawyers come back and told my lawyers. Hi Josh, we are instructed that Ms Zaha submitted the document in question without his knowledge. That said... The document does raise serious concerns in relation to Mr. D. Heck's motivation and grant of legal aid in this proceeding. They will need to be addressed at some stage. Regards. And I've got brilliant replies back to everyone. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to meet Stephen's legal team. So this is Harmon Lawyers. And the guy that um, was representing Stephen McCullough was this guy here. Brian Burke. Brian Burke, all right. So he was had an instructing lawyer who, in court, doesn't even have a picture. But every single piece of correspondence that I received from Harmon's lawyers was written unprofessionally. I, I honestly believe I could have written better content than they did. Now, Ben Hood was the lawyer that was in the high court when I went in there um, last week when they filed a discontinuance an hour and a half before this big bull attack. 
And he wouldn't even eyeball me, even though I was trying to. <laughs> it was quite funny. But the correspondence, so we believe that Ben Hood has been practicing, uh, he says, been admitted as a barrister and solicitor in September 2019. So I don't know when he started his legal career, but he's only been working for Harman since January 2022. So it looked like he got thrown under the bus a little bit. Right, so this lawyer company has about 50 people working for it. I know them. I, I, I even went to a work do, and they were all there, and I actually had one of the, I think the receptionist or legal secretary sitting on me telling me how they didn't like a guy by the name of Brent Selwyn, who used to be a partner in the company who did something that upset them ter terribly. And she said, don't mention his name here because they don't like him. And I witnessed this guy, which I mentioned in my first affidavit, that I saw him at a scammer events once, and I text this guy because I knew him because he used to go to my business networking saying, don't invest in this scam company that, from Australia. You'll lose all your money. And then he didn't listen to me, invest in this, in this company, and uh, two days later, it was in the paper that everyone that invested lost all their money. Now, this guy used to be a partner of Harmon's lawyers. He's not now. He's working with another company. And it's sort of not irrelevant, but I remember writing this in my reply to their, their cease and desist letter I got in, in December. Anyway, I don't want to get off target. So anyway, this is their legal team. You know, the, all fairness, this is like Goliath. This is my legal team. Two lawyers, right? Peter, he's $650 an hour. And then we've got Ali, he's a $400 an hour um, barrister. These guys are seriously the Davids. We're the small company. We're the small lawyer company. They are not employed by the New Zealand government. They are brilliant. Peter gave me total peace of mind. We were on a Zoom meeting. I never met him face to face. He said, Danny, I have watched 10 hours of your videos. You have done a good job. Let us do what we do do well. And that's the advice he gave me. Absolutely brilliant. And all the correspondence, especially Ali, he does all the legal correspondence with the courts, uh, all the submissions. Every single piece of correspondence that I read was first class. I literally, hand on heart, feel, and I feel these are the best defamation lawyers ever um, I've come across. Not that I'm in court all the time, or nor do I want to be, but they gave me total peace of mind. Now, I wouldn't have got in contact with these people, unless this guy here, Joshua, Joshua Petrus. Now he explained his role. He said he's like the GP, and Ali and Peter are like the specialist. And you need the GP to write out that you need to see a specialist. And he handled all the correspondence. He had been watching my YouTube channel, and he rang me up one day, and he said, "If you ever get yourself in the shit." feel free to contact me. So I did. I rang him up one day and the first thing he says, you're in the shit, aren't you? And I said, I think so, because Stephen McCullough was coming after me with a defamation case for $3.8 million. Now there's a lot of twist and turn and I don't want to bore you in these videos, but would you believe that after it had been submitted to the high court, his lawyers come back and said they'd made a mistake and it was only meant to be $500,000. How can you make a mistake once you've already lodged something in the New Zealand High Court? So I don't know what their strategies were, but some of the things that were really curly was the fact that Natalie tried to defame me. And since then, we've managed to get Natalie on a video, Hello, but she, we've got no proof that she was actually a lawyer or acting with Steve. But we do have Cindy Piper, otherwise known as Crypto Granny, who was actually working with Natalie to defame me for three months. They were trying to get her to create content um, that would be used in court to defame me or give them more evidence. And they didn't have any evidence because if you're ever going to be a YouTuber and you're ever going to do anything um, you know, where you may be put in front of a lawsuit, then make sure you just always uh, proclaim the truth. And that's what these videos are all going to be about. Now, I just, I don't think I've got too much here more to go about. Yeah, I, if you go to my YouTube channel, you see that I have a playlist, and the playlist is basically showing you all the videos. Now, I'm just hey. going to give you a bit of a heads up how that all worked. The first video was done um, seven months ago, and I had Cindy Piper 
um, Martin Kingsbury and Anne. Uh, I can't remember her last name. And basically, there were three people that invested in Luna One and basically lost a lot. I do explain it with Rob, so I'm not going to do that again. I produced that video. Then I started attracting the attention of Stephen McCullough. I got a cease and desist letter in December. And then rather than writing back or getting a lawyer engaged, I decided to do a video. Now, I researched, I got all the information. I spent a good couple of weeks putting together a video. It was four hours and 47 minutes long. Yes, a long time video. It was what I call a cornerstone video that I later chopped up into eight different parts. So you don't have to sit there and watch the whole lot unless you like bins watching videos. Now my content on my YouTube channel is long form content. I don't do seven minutes precise videos. I do well explained because a lot of people want to have facts and information and it's very hard to do that when you're just chucking a few graphics up on the screen. So if you have four hours and 47 minutes of your life to watch, um, then I encourage you to do so. And if you don't, then go to one of the eight sections. They're all time-stamped. So I'm just going to, um, time-stamping is brilliant. So if you click on a video like you see here, right, and then you go down to the more show more button, it will show you all the timestamps. And if you go right to the very bottom, you'll see that there's chapters and you click on view all. And then you can go and watch the chapters and you can jump forward and back as you wish. So why am I still going on about this? Why am I still going on about um, Luna One? And why am I still going on about Stephen McCullough? Well, let me just give you a brief summary. This is a WordPress website. This is the website for Luna One. This is the website where they all lost the money. This is where they were told that if they get in quick and quick and fast and early, they can buy their tokens for 15 cents each. When they go to market, they're going to be launched on market for 25 cents each. When market day happened, they got launched at five cents. Some of the people never even got delivered the tokens. Um, so they couldn't sell them on uh, market day, which is ridiculous. Now have a good look at this website. Now, we've had another guy who's got um, a YouTube channel recently saying that he didn't even know that he was partnered with, um, and it's this shark numbers guy. Now, he's interviewed me. He invested $30,000 into Luna One. He interviewed Cindy, four or five other people, and now he's gone quiet. So I don't know what's happening there. Everyone that's gone quiet seems to have been paid off. He, he has alleged that he hasn't signed any NDA, and um, he's also said that he's not going to take any of their videos off. So it does sound like he's been speaking to them. But they do actually pay people off, and I wouldn't be surprised. And I'm not saying that, in, but you haven't done the video that you said you were going to do. And the first video that you did did was a real cracker. It had 25,000 people view it in three days. Well done for you. And you also have 200,000 people on your YouTube channel. He didn't know that he was part of this partner system on Luna One. Now, I'm going to go down here, and we're going to look at these people. Right, these people here, have you seen them before? Well, let's go to fourth star. Now, because I was the guy that was holding all the developments up for uh, Apollo Fintech and Luna One. Now, Luna One is owned by Stephen McCullough. Now, we don't know if he's made a claim that fourth star is owned by him, but if you search for Stephen McCullough, you can see I own you on the internet, mate. Your name is Mud. So you probably don't want your name associated with anything. Fourth star... We have contacted a young lady who has theoretically claimed to be partnered with Fourth Star. Now, it's a rinse and repeat Ponzi, not Ponzi scheme, scam. Straight out scam in my opinion. You can see here, as mentioned, the other day it said partnered with and mentioned by. Now, if you go through and you, you expect if you clicked on any of these links, it will take you through to the claim. But they don't. They're all false claims. Look at this. These people, same people. This Luna One undeniably has scanned people. 11,000 investors. I have 42 people who have come forward. If you're one of them and you haven't given me your name, please do so. I have your name, your email address, your country you're from, how much you're invested, and then I can contact you. And as I showed you briefly, I have a database um, all about Stephen McCullough. I have, a, I have everything on him. I have all the people that he's associated with. Um, so if you go in here, let's go down to, I've got, um, oh, I've got voice files, all his associates. I've got a large database of everyone that's worked with them. I've had, um, Cliff and another guy who used to work with them come to me 
and tell me the insides of the companies. They're only doing announcements, trying to keep their investors happy, and they're about to release this fourth star um, as another scheme. And if you go through and you look at this website, it's built on WordPress. Oh my God, it's disgusting. I, I use WordPress, but I'm not um, going to be something in the metaverse. Um, for security-wise, I don't think um, WordPress is the way to go. All right, so I just wanted to give you a heads up that, look at this, this picture here is exactly the same as the one that you saw at the start here. So they've meant to have merged with a company that theoretically was 300 times bigger. Now, I don't even know if Fourth Star is the merge that Stephen McCullough was talking about um, he was going to do. There's no, but we did go through and look at Fourth Star and we did contact the young girl who I can't see here at the moment, who's theoretically this girl here, partnership with Kitty, but I can't even say her name, Olson, is it? Kitty Olson. Kitty Olson. Now, she's meant to be doing some um, virtual headset 3D stuff with them. We've reached out to her. Now, I've gone on to her Twitter uh, and posted and told her, be careful, you're, you're um, oh, it's not the right one, um, yeah, on her Twitter, and now she's blocked me. And also, all the people in her Telegram group, she is um, blocked uh, us as well. So I don't know what's going on there, but um, obviously she doesn't know about the history of this company, and maybe you don't either. So I'm going to do a series of videos, and I'm going to um, expose Stephen McCullough, and he may need to get his legal team back on board again because um, I'm not going to sit this, uh, take this sitting down. As he said, um, if you want to take on a bull, then you need to be prepared for the consequences. As his voice note said at the start, he didn't want a fair fight. He only wanted to, um, you know, stop me from producing videos. What do they call it? A you know, block me from doing these videos. I'm not going away. And now that um, I have been awarded the cost, it's around about $31,000 roughly. Um, that's how much money um, we have accumulated um, fighting this bull. And um, obviously now the bull, an hour and a half before, a judge looked at a 217-page affidavit showing, showing him all the things that Stephen McCullough had done I'm looking at the judge holding my 217 pages and he's got one letter in his hand and he goes, you filed a discontinuance an hour and a half ago and you don't want me to look why this guy, Stephen McCullough, needs to pay security for costs? So we was asking him to pay $150,000 into a trust fund so that when he loses that I don't get lumbered with the cost of the court proceedings. We got up to $31,000 um, and we don't have government lawyers working for us. That is a load of shit. Um, my lawyers have never actually done a legal aid case. Joshua had actually helped them apply so they could work um, with the legal aid money. They didn't get their normal hourly rate, but when they watched the videos that they saw this guy, they were passionate about stopping Stephen McCullough. They said to me, 10 hours of video, you've done a brilliant job exposing the scammer. Please do watch my videos and do share them, like, subscribe, do all that sort of stuff so these videos can get out to people. That's how they YouTube monitor how many people like and subscribe. We're fighting with investors who think that Stephen McCullough isn't a scammer. I'm not going anywhere. So help me fight these scammers. Remember, I'm here to name and shame anyone running a Ponzi scheme or a scam. Now, Stephen McCullough, dinosaur hunter. He's meant to have gold-backed currency. He's got three or four mines that any day now, machinery's turning up to dig up gold. He's got visitor centers where people can go and test new machinery. They can watch explosions. He's got Knox Wire, Knox Net. Uh, his programmer, he didn't pay his programmer, so his programmer took off of all the code. Now he's rebranded it to Knox Net. He's meant to have hundreds of millions of dollars worth of mergers with companies that don't exist. Every project that this guy has announced has never eventuated. Not one of these projects. He is a pumper and a dumper of crypto coins. Go check out all the last tokens or coins that he's been part of. You will see a pattern. Zero dot zero zero zero. All of them are worthless shit. And now... He's got fourth star, can't see his name or his photo on it, but it's exactly the same as Luna One. 
They spent three months doing a building, uh, a campaign using the run guys. They did videos every day just about on why everyone should invest in Luna One. He's used Mr. Wonderful before. He's used John McAfee before to do hype. So who's the next influencer that's going to start promoting Fourth Star and this kitty girl? Is, why are they doing it again? They have already got on the website that they are going to release this coin at 30 cents each. Don't be one of the 11,000 people that lost their money to Luna One and start thinking you know better than Danny DeHeck, a.k.a. the Crypto Ponzi Scheme Avenger. Enough said. You've got an idea? You've got the flavour of the cake that you're about to eat? Now, let's sit there and watch Rob and myself have a nice conversation around about 11.30 at night, went through to about 1 o'clock, and we did a talk about the, the court case. Because I hit a, I'm back on form right now, but I actually hit a bit of a wall and I didn't know how to start this video. So my next video, which I will do, will be probably just the initial, um, you know, how they corresponded back and forth, and and um, and also the documents that we had to support us uh, send to the courts. All right, so enjoy, and, and I'll fade in about now. Enjoy the show. It starts off a little bit slow, and I'm sure you'll love it. But please do subscribe, hit the thumbs up, and um, hit that bell and be notified when new videos come out. Hey, thank you for watching me. Let's stop these scammers. Stephen McCullough. Ew, what a big bull. Load of bull. That's what you are, Stephen. Woohoo. Oh, you ready? Nice. We're under energized. <laughs> Energizing. I got a I got a funny one for you, Rob. Have you? Yeah, well uh, have have we started? Yeah. Oh. I haven't done the intro, but I'll do it now. Right, I'm Danny DeHeck aka the crypto ponzi scheme avenger and this is the bald big fella yeah so someone listened to a voiceover that we're about to listen to and someone said i know that voice that's the bald big fella and that's that's going to be a stigma mate. i'm sorry man it's not a nice introduction <laughs> who the beep said that uh it was a guy called the brotherhood in a telegram group right. and he he that's identified terrible. it is but that's who you are mate you're the bald big fella so i should be scared of you or should i be scared of stephen mccullough do you know who stephen mccullough is who's stephen he's the guy on the wall i'm gonna have a beer oh mm. hi stephen he says hi back. Who, who, who's he? Well, that guy thought that he would try and sue me. And no way. Didn't I, didn't I tell you? No way. Yeah, mate. Guess how much? Come on, guess. Five bucks. Oh, I'm worth more than that, mate. Do you think I'm worth five bucks? hundred dollars. Yeah, that's about right. Okay. No, $3.8 million. Stephen McCullough was going to sue me. That's like that. That's that's like um, three point eight million. Yeah, but um, the funny thing about it is, um, we Mate, that's more than I earn. Oh, I earn that. Oh, yeah, but shh, don't tell people how much I earn. Unbelievable. Do you know why he's, he wanted to sue me for that? Why? Because he's an idiot. He's poor. He obviously no, no, has no he thought money. I, if he's he thought, that I, much. he thought I was rich. No way. He <laughs> sorry. He even hired people to produce content and get to them to say things so that when they when they won in court that they would get some of the money they retrieved from me. Do you, do you know how much I'm worth, Rob? How much are you worth, Danny? Not much, mate. <laughs> it's just not enough to sue for three point eight million dollars. I'm in pre I'm in look, I tell you what, if I was sued for that much, I would be I'd be thinking, yeah. Yeah. So I'm in a bit I've I've done quite a few YouTube videos exposing this Stephen McCullough guy here, and the, the problem is I'm, I'm a bit of a stalemate now because I, I want to tell him the story about all the court case. I've got all the documents. I've got all the evidence. Uh, not that I needed it, but one and a half hours before it got a high court judge here in New Zealand to look at it, they filed a uh, discontinuance. They did. Yeah. And the judge, the judge... His eyebrows raised as he picked up this piece of paper and said, when was this filed? 
And the little wee me, me, me lawyer said, an hour ago, <laughs> we want to stop the case. So that was quite funny, really. Is that how it worked? Is that how it played out in court? Well, I went to the court because I wanted to, I was dressed up too in uniform. In your flash suit? No, I didn't have the suit. You I, didn't? I had the uh, same jersey I had on as the crypto Ponzi scheme Avenger when I was in the New York Times for exposing scammers. Um, is that the one with the cape on the back? No, I took the cape off because oh. I, I didn't think they'd let it in. Yeah, you know, yeah. You know, very hard to get those through scanners. Yeah. It was really cool, though, because um, when you're busting scammers, if you want to get into doing this for a YouTube channel, it's literally like I'm David and the scammers are like Goliath. So that guy on the wall, he has his own country. No way. He does. He, he took the website offline for the country. I don't know why, but I can only assume that his lawyers said, doesn't look good having a fake country as your country. Just saying. What country are you from? Aotearoa. I don't even know any Maori words. Is there anywhere near New Zealand? No, no. So this guy had literally got his own country called the United Alloyed States, which is pretty cool. So tell me how this thing started. Well, Were was, you naughty? No, I've never been naughty. I'm a good Christian boy. I was brought up a Jehovah's Witness. I might have knocked Are they on Christians? Your, I might have knocked on their door and talked to you about Jehovah. Could have done. Not likely. There's some content coming out about that next month, which I'll tell you about next time. All right, so how did it start? Is that the question? Yeah, how did it start? Right, so I've been busting Ponzi schemes for about 12 months, and I've, the one I've done my time on is Hyperverse, which is I'm quite proud of. And from that, people had come aware that I help people who have got themselves in the shit when investing in <laughs> shit opportunities. So they invested in a scam called Luna One. And Luna One had this wonderful token. And this was an, I didn't know anything about the company when I first did the video. But anyway, they told everyone for three months that when they released this token for Luna One, oh, burpees, it's going to be on the market at 25 cents per token. I think their coins were tokens. I get mixed up. Yep. All right. And they had these guys, the run guys, who went to town on it. Are, you, Are they like a social media influencer? They've got 250,000 subscribers. That's more than you've got. Three-month campaign telling everyone that they could get in and buy these tokens on the pre-sale at a discounted rate. Guess how much? How much? 15 cents each. Supposedly worth 25 cents. When they go on the market. Brilliant. Okay. That sounds brilliant, actually. Guess what happened on market day? They went to a dollar. No. Wrong. But they bought them at 15 cents? Yeah. They went to 80 cents. No. They went to 60 cents. No, they haven't been launched yet. So they got launched on the market first, and that yeah. sets the price. So they've been telling everyone that when their coin goes on the market, they're going to launch it at 25 cents. And that's okay. before it starts getting traded. Brilliant. So they dumped it on the market, you won't believe this, at five cents. But didn't they buy them for 15? People did. Yeah. At a discounted rate because they were told it's going to go on the market at 25 cents. So wouldn't that mean that they lost like two-thirds of their money straight off? Boom. Not only that, 24 hours later, they're worth one cent. Oh, yeah, so there's a lot of pissed off people. There's 11,000 people that were pissed off. I've got about 42 of them at the moment, and if you've lost money in Luna 1, you want to give me your name and your email address and your contact details, I'll put you on the database. Because I'm, I've got a brilliant database of everyone that's invested in Luna 1 and lost their money. Because not only that, a lot of the people that come to me said they never received the tokens they bought for 15 cents. So even if they wanted to get out of the deal on market day, they couldn't trade anything. No. So I had three people approach me going, ah, we've been ripped off. One of them was Cindy Piper. Another one was Anne. And another one was called um, David, oh, sorry, uh, Martin Kingsbury. <laughs> Cindy Piper <laughs> started up a YouTube channel. 
Yeah. And went to town on them. And she contacted me. Anti them. Yeah. I've been scammed. And she dived out all this information, absolutely most amazing information whatsoever. Martin Kingsbury started up a, a YouTube channel and a Facebook page and went to town on them. Cindy Piper, she invested $6,000. Her husband invested $1,000. And a friend of hers invested $3,000. So, long story short, Stephen McCullough returned her money. Now, you might think that's a good, honourable thing to do, Stephen, but you're not honourable. He did it because he wanted the videos offline. And when they removed the videos, then all of a sudden, all these videos come out about me. 35 videos. She was going to town on me, telling people that Off I'm... Off from her? Yeah, she turned. So she came on my YouTube video... I did a video, and then she turned it all around and just um, made my life, well, not made my life hell, but she was publishing content. I'm sitting there thinking, I just helped you get your money back from the scam, and now you're publishing content on the internet trying to defame me and make me look um, not credible. So what I didn't know, and it's a long story, and I'm going to do a whole series of videos all about it because it's such an awesome story. For the next three months, Cindy Piper was working with the fake, which we now know is a fake attorney called Natalie. And they were trying to get Cindy to record information to defame me that they could use in court, which I weren't aware of. The other one was David Kingsbury. Now, he's a good fella. He didn't turn on me and he never did any bad videos about me, but all of a sudden he disappeared. And now we've found out he signed an NDA and he got his £10,000 back. The other one is Anne. She unfortunately still hasn't got her money back but is willing to testify in court, which was going to be one of my key witnesses. So if you want to pay her off, Stephen, <laughs> then I would recommend doing so. She deserves her money back. But it did seem like everyone that complained um, about losing their money, he was paying them off to shut them up. So if you did want your money back, then you needed to do a video. Now, there was a guy just recently who's got 200,000 subscribers who just did a video, he had 25,000 people look at it within uh, three days. He's gone quiet. <laughs> and we're thinking, this is six months later. So we don't know what's happened to him. We're hoping he's going to, he interviewed myself and a, a few other people, was going to put together a video, and now he's sort of come up with a, eh, we're not sure what's happening uh, excuse. So we can only, but the only person that had never invested was myself. So that, around about in December, I got a cease and desist letter from a local lawyer telling me that he was working for Hyper, um, not to be mistaken, they said, not Hypertech, but Hyper Technologies Inc. And they were the owner of Luna One, which was a surprise to the community because Stephen McCullough, that guy on the wall, said that he didn't own Luna One. But now we've got a lawyer's letter telling us that he is the owner of Luna One and they want to sue my ass off me if I don't remove my videos. So... I couldn't afford a lawyer because I'm poor. So instead of... And did you remove your videos? No. I was just getting started. Cool. What I thought would be a good idea to do, because it was right when I was having a holiday, I was sailing in, in the in Auckland on the on the yacht. Oh, right. Okay. Uh, okay. Private I, yacht. Yeah. yeah. And um, so then I thought, I know what I'll do. They, they gave me seven days to remove my video or else. And... Just to get you in the harm, into the, I want to play the the threat that I got. Now, a good friend of mine, Rob No Name, has actually um, heard of him. Has put together a video here of the threat that was posted onto a Telegram group, warning anyone. Who put the video together? I put the video together. Thank you. And the voice over is Rob No Name. No, no, he doesn't know. Um, but the point of the video is to show you the scum bucket. I'm just going to go back to the scum bucket on the wall. That guy there, the horse. <laughs> or oh, that guy there. I just want to show you the the threat. Now, this guy claims he's on the... So these are his, his words. His, is that right? Yes, his words. We haven't altered them in any which way or form, and we can prove this. But I just wanted people to listen to the type of messages this guy has sent out. And I thought the only way to do it was to do a wee video and ask somebody who's good at speaking to read it for me. Now, just before you play that, where where, where did you get these words from? Um, off there, um, we've got 
um, that was forwarded onto what they call the FUD Telegram group, which is where Stephen claims he was having a hard job talking people. Um, he was having a hard job about stopping people talking badly about him. So in their own Telegram group, anytime you said, I'm not happy that I just lost all my money, you would get booted out. So then there was a, we didn't know at the time, but there's four and a half years of history of Stephen McCullough, going right back to hunting for dinosaurs, to having this fake country, and he's done all these crypto pump and dumps in the past, which I've learned about and I've documented quite well now, the fact that this was just another one. Um, so anyway, so he, to shut everyone up, he said to everyone, which you'll hear in the words, share this around, broadcast it, because I want people to know not to basically go after us. So you okay. ready for this? Okay. okay I'll, I think we need to stop along the way, but let's just have a wee listen. I want to make sure this gets sent to the right people, so please feel free to spread this around. We have been told that some of these pathetic, absolutely obsessed psychopaths are trying to contact governments to somehow prove we are a scam. Right, so I had actually tried to contact the government in South Africa because Steve claimed that he had a gold mine, and I found a court document with an email address on it, and when I sent to that email address, it bounced back. And I thought, oh, that's interesting, because I don't think our government the bank. Oh, okay, yep, yep. Yeah, so it looked like a fake document, the email address, and that was to some African high court. And there were some documents claiming that they had a, a claim, a gold mine claim. And Steve's mentioned he's got three or four claims, and he's about to start gold mining, because he's got a gold back currency. All right, and the other one is, and there was another deal going down at the time with Fast Cash, and I don't even know who Fast Cash is, but I did a bit of research, had a look around, tried to find a contact email address, tried to communicate with him, never got any correspondence. But there was another guy at the time called Sultan, and uh, other people were trying to contact all these companies that they were claiming they had um, alliances with or partnerships with, because every single one of these partnerships, it didn't stack up. And it, it seemed like total bullshit. And to this day, it is total bullshit because none of those companies have ever corresponded with us. They're like they don't exist. Uh, anyway, so, um, yeah, it's, it's outrageous. So just have a wee bit more to listen. First of all, if we are working with the government, then wouldn't that show in and of itself that we are not a scam? Now, did you notice all the ifs? If we are working with a government... Uh, wouldn't that show? But there's no proof that they are working with the government. Stephen claims that he is actually providing a platform where governments can actually run their whole countries on. And his own country, called the United Alloy States, is using the software that is in beta, not released yet, and theoretically he's working with other governments who are using his software that doesn't exist yet. So the fact that he's working with invisible governments, which he never names... This proves that he's not a scam. Has, has he never named any of the government? That's where I come in. Okay. Because everything that has stopped this company growing is because Danny DeHeck, a YouTuber with 4,500 subscribers, is ruining this company by producing a video that's had about 2,000 looks. Is that a statement that's been made, or is that what you're saying now? N numerous times he said that the FUD group and um, they need to stop the Danny. The Danny. They need to stop Danny De Heck. They've already paid off other people. And the in one of his video, he said there's only two people left. I don't know who the second person was, um, but I think it might have been Martin Kingsbury at the time. All right. Obviously, if we were a scam with no products, then why would we spend the immense time and resources to court one government, much less many? So, what money? What resources? There is no money. There is no resources. He spent money on absolutely nothing. It's just, this is total bullshit. There's no infrastructure in what he's doing. This is what we've found by our research. And if, if I am wrong, <laughs> please let me know. But there's no government organization associated. There's no products. There's no service. There's no infrastructure. Everything he said he's doing is going to be in the future. He's that gonna be guy. What this shows is that you know we are legit, 
but you don't want us to succeed because you're too fueled by anger. You would rather destroy the lives of thousands of people than for us to succeed because it goes against your idiotic, depraved narrative. Okay, so in the Telegram groups, they were the people were coming in who worked for them, and they were telling us that we are ruining people's lives. We are uh, making people's investments fall over. We are affecting people's lives d detrimentally because of our actions. And that was how they were pleading with us. And there was about five different people. You'd knock one out of your channel, and then the next day somebody else would turn up with a different hat on, and they'd be going on about the same. It was like everything was rehearsed. You know, if I was a scammer, I'd have a bank of computers, different personalities on each of them, and I'd, you know, use them to manipulate. The, and this is exactly what we seem to be happening. No one um, has actually, um, except a, a small handful of people, like seven or eight people, seem to be behind this. I want to make it known that if someone does this, we will be made aware immediately and given the information of that person. We have several million dollars in a legal team set aside just for this type of thing. Okay, now the reason they dropped the $3.8 million lawsuit in the New Zealand High Court against me is because they were trying to plead with us out of court. We've got numerous letters, which I'm going to do videos on, and I show you all the correspondence that we had between their lawyers and our lawyers. Now, they were trying to sue us for $3.8 million. I got legal aid, which means, fortunately enough, my lawyers um, basically normally are $650 an hour, thank you very much. They had never worked for legal aid before, which means they looked at the videos that he was claiming I was defaming them on. They spent 10 hours watching my video, the three lawyers. I know. I did my first, my first, my first oh, view. No. Because they had, and then they said that I didn't need to worry about anything because I'd done a good job exposing this guy. They didn't need anything else from me. They actually literally said to me, you just let us do what we do well and don't stress. And, and if it went to court... The judge and the jury would literally have to watch 10 hours of my videos. That's five subscribers, Rob. Mate, like <laughs> can you put it that way? So then they got this fake lawyer on board. They sent all these documents to... Who, who, was, who, who got the fake well, lawyer on board? Remember Cindy Piper at the start? Yeah. Then they were theoretically working for Stephen McCullough with the fake lawyer for three months trying to produce content to defame me that they could use in a court case to get me to get my videos off. That's the story. But the twist in it all, after this fake lawyer that was had been working with Stephen McCullough, um, sent all the we've got a document that's got 45 different reasons why I am a terrorist threat, I shouldn't deserve legal aid, I'm a millionaire, I don't need the money, I'm defrauding the New Zealand taxpayer, all these things. It's just amazing, which we will show you coming up. So that was created by who? Natalie. Uh, sent to every government organisation anonymously. The fake lawyer, uh, allegedly. Yes. And then a week later, it got officially sent to lawyers and the Dropbox links where all the information was that they were sent was the same links. So the anonymous letter, then we figured out who really sent it. Then, two days after that document got sent, we received a letter from Stephen McCullough's lawyer because they somehow miraculously found out about this email that was going around, which I didn't know, and then they said that Natalie has nothing to do with them. All this time, Natalie's been working with them, claiming that she's Stephen McCullough's lawyer, and all of a sudden, they basically kicked her out and said, um, we don't need you anymore. The deed is done. She was the one working with Cindy Piper to gather information. So just to give you a little bit of background of the dirty tactics, and that's what I want to do these videos on, because the dirty tactics of Stephen McCullough, because he disowned his own lawyer after she'd done the dirty deed. And I'm a terrorist threat to my own country. Notice my haircut? Well, my hairdresser is Wasim, and Wasim was, we had a, a mosque shooting here in Christchurch, New Zealand, where I'm from. 51 people lost their life, and they used this in the letter to say that I'm a terrorist threat to my own country. That's how dirty tactics they go. My hairdresser 
was actually shot five times in that mosque. Do you think that I would peer a white supremacist and a terrorist threat and having a hairdresser that got shot five times? It just doesn't... I mean, this is how dirty tactics these guys used. Anyway, let's carry on. Anyway, so my point was, the reason why they were trying to negotiate out of court was they wanted to save the expensive court costs of going through the high court. In this video that you just watched in the statement, he says he's got seven, uh, two or three million dollars set aside with a legal team that will fight anyone that stands up to them. All of a sudden, money becomes a problem. Make sense? Hmm. Well... Wow. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, let's carry on. Why do you think so many media organisations have published public apologies? My promise is that if, when we find out someone is actively trying to sabotage us and defame our name, even once, we will lock onto you like a leech and sue you like there is no tomorrow. Now, interesting enough, he's talking about when he was a dinosaur hunter, the CNN published a, 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 an apology because they got some of the information incorrect about him being a dinosaur hunter. Now, this was back in 2012. To my knowledge, I've never heard of any other apology. Now, this is before Stephen McCullough became a giant scammer. So the fact that he now twists that and exaggerates that to so many public apologies from media is a, a, a fathom? I can't fathom that. It's just, it's just ridiculous. And now, if I am wrong, can somebody please give me some other public apologies for getting Stephen McCullough's business model wrong? Because obviously I can't find anyone else that's apologised to him other than CNN once back in 2012 because he was a dinosaur hunter. Maybe he didn't find a dinosaur dolphin. hunter. Oh, I've got noises for that, but I won't put them on. But maybe about now if I remember, I'll put that noise on. So, yes, yeah, so when he was 2012, he did a Kickstarter campaign. He raised $29,000, and then he was going to go to the conga, and he was going to hunt for live dinosaurs and human-sized, I can't say that we're tarantula spiders. Tarantulas. Yes, and that's what he was hunting for. When he I got there... he didn't find any. Well, he didn't because he didn't have his paperwork in order. And would you believe all his equipment got stolen? And you need a lot of gear for dinosaur hunting. I don't want to lose my equipment. So that got a lot of media coverage. He ran back home and he said to everyone, don't worry, I'm going to do another Kickstarter, Kickstarter campaign. And he's going to, I don't know what happened after that. But anyway, he got a lot of negative media attention at that time because it was something unusual. I mean, everyone does Kickstarter campaigns for dinosaur hunting. Yeah. All right, so let's carry on about the leeches. Sorry about that. We will make it known to the world. We will call you out to everyone. We will never stop suing you. We will sue you until there is nothing left but ashes, and we will assign a legal team to watch those ashes until there is any microscopic sign of life. As soon as there is, we will sue the hell out of you again until you don't have a dime to your name. We will do this without thinking because you are messing with multi-million dollar contracts and something that will affect millions Excellent. of lives. If someone wants a war, we sure as hell will give them one. We have already been given names and we have handed those to our legal teams. We're going to start calling these people out and dropping lawsuits. We will be calling employers. We will be bringing them into the situation. Now, I, I work one day, well, maybe one and a half days a week. Mm -hmm. And, Stephen, I know you're watching this. <laughs> but my the guy that I work for said that if you pay him $20,000, he will fire me. Just letting you know if you want to hurt me some more. But I need that job to help pay my <laughs> rent. Okay? But, yeah. And that you can work for me and get fired for the same well, amount I, of money. I work for Rob. <laughs> Rob, do you want some money? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Don't pick a fight with a bull if you don't want to deal with the consequences. We will never stop, not until they are on the streets. We just sent out subpoenas to Telegram and Twitter. We will expose and destroy. Wow, that's interesting. So this was six months ago. He sent out subpoenas to Telegram and Twitter. wonder what happened with those... Those what subpoenas. did that do? Well, well nothing, right? Oh, is that to... Yeah, what is that Well, for? we were on Telegram, and he was trying to shut down the the FUD group, all right? 
Yeah. And the FUD group was basically exposing them. And, and we had, uh, there's another group that's still live today. If you ever want this information, I'll, I should put links below this video. But there's, we've got four and a half years of documents, um, false claims. We've got, we've got pictures of him claiming that he's mining, he's got a 3,700 hectare or acre um, gold mine. And the pictures that he's got on the video are actually a coal mine in India because we found the originals. <laughs> he's, yeah. And then he said that he's going to have an information center. There's photos of the information center on the internet when he opened it. Now, the, he also claims he's opening up his own bank. So there's a bank called Knox Wire. Now, at Christmas time, he was having staffing problems. He had a guy, Cliff, who was his office manager, head coder in the company. He owns 75% of the code that this banking platform runs on. Now, would you believe he didn't pay, uh, he didn't pay um, this programmer guy? The guy went through a divorce, he moved out of the office, and they had a big dispute about money. Now, in one of my videos when I'm doing it, Steve's talking about how he's having staffing problems and he had to hire six new people. So the guy that left him owned the code, which meant it left him high and dry. So now he's come out with a new thing. Instead of Knox Wire, he's rebranded it to Knox Net. And in Knox Net, they're offering a banking platform that's going to be more stable than regular banks. So just, every, it goes on and on. It's very uh, well diversified. Yeah. Um, so in, anyway, long story short about boring people, I want to do a whole series of videos um, showing every blow along the way, especially where I was accused of being a terrorist threat. But immediately... After the court case, I did a video basically saying I won. Okay, I saw that, yeah. Yep, and I did that because I did win. Because from my perspective, I'm David and he's Goliath. He's got all the money. He's got all the scammer money. And he can throw his weight around. Now, my lawyers, when they first looked at the lawyer's information from Harmon's lawyers, they said it's a very serious thing that he's done. And I said, oh, okay. Well, I'm pretty sure it's serious because he's lodged it in the New Zealand High Court. And he said he's probably spent around about $150,000 so far. And that's New Zealand dollars. So around about $110,000 US $1, he spent preparing a court case against me. So you can imagine how intimidating that was. And also to throw that much money at some little YouTuber who's got 4,500 subscribers who has really gone to town on him and will continue to do so because you can't stop somebody in New Zealand that easily, that I was a bit overwhelmed and thinking, what can I do about it? So I had to, I went off to the courts and I said, I want to represent myself. And they said, no, mate, you need a barrister. Now, a barrister is like a specialist lawyer. And through my connections, I actually managed to find two of the best barristers in New Zealand, in my opinion, and they totally are. And they are defamationlawyers.co.nz and Ali and Peter. And if you ever need some good lawyers to help you fight scammers like Stephen McCullough, by, by all means, reach out to them. And I were not paid to say this. My lawyers wrote really good professional letters. They gave me fantastic advice and they gave me total peace of mind. Now, I also had another, another guy called Joshua. Now, Joshua re reached out to me six months before this all happens because he's a YouTube subscriber, and he said, I've been watching your YouTube channel. I like what you do. If you ever get yourself in the shit, Danny, give me a ring. And what happened? I gave him a ring, and he said, you're in the shit. And I went, could be. <laughs> and I was in a lot of shit at the time. So I was quite alarming. Anyway, Joshua said, look, I, work for, I, can, I can't take this case on. He asked his company. They were overwhelmed with work. They couldn't take the case on. And he said, but I'll, I'm going to stick my neck out. I'm going to ask around. Because he knew another guy um, who's really well known in New Zealand. And he said, he's got a good legal team. So he reached out to these lawyers. And he said, look, would you take on Danny's case? Would you believe it? They hate scammers. And they had never done a case on legal aid. Now, if you're not familiar with legal aid, it's not a get out of jail. Card. It doesn't mean I don't have to pay it. It's a loan from the government. I actually have to pay the money back. I have to apply for the grant. Everyone in New Zealand is entitled to um, a, a, a fair trial. And there's no way I could have stood up to that um, Goliath without receiving legal aid. But the problem with legal aid... And we're going to hear about this soon, aren't we? Yes. 
The problem with legal aid is my lawyers have to work at a reduced rate. So my lawyers are normally $650 an hour. There's no way I can afford to do this. And we got granted 100 hours worth of work, um, which means they're working for a very reduced rate. But because they wanted to help me out and they were passionate about stopping their scammers and they saw my videos, they stuck their neck out. And I, I got the best legal advice ever. Stephen published a recording, which we're going to listen to now, um, the day after I posted my last video basically saying that um, I, I've knocked out Goliath. Um, should we listen to that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, where you going? All right, so here we go. He's in his car. It's not the best sound, but you should get the idea. We in no way lost anything. Um, he did not win anything. We did not lose anything. Um, so what happened was he got a public defender, and what our lawyer said was like an unprecedented action. Um, so, okay, he says he didn't win anything. Uh, okay. Um, he, did. he 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 didn't, didn't lose anything. It. Yep. But. He has and spent a lot of money, me. hasn't he? He, he said to me, um, I hadn't won anything, but I had, I won the case. Right, well, that's not what I heard there. I heard yep. that he he's saying he hasn't won anything, he hasn't lost anything, but he has spent quite a lot of money, hasn't he? Well, theoretically, I mean, I don't know. Lawyers aren't cheap. He went to a, a, a company I know that's got over 50 staff. Right. Is there any way that he gets his money back? No, but he has to pay all my legal fees now. Okay. And uh, what was that thing that he said right at the end there? Yeah. Um, oh, about a public defender, and that's how that's unheard of in New Zealand. Yeah, I don't think we even call them public defenders, but what he's saying is that, I think he goes on to say it, but he, he says that the government represented me. And that's not true. Okay, well, let's play it on. He got a public defender, and which ended up being like three or four lawyers, um, like $300 an hour lawyers. $650 an hour, cheapskate. To uh, defend him on the government's dime. So basically it was us against the New Zealand government. It was him against the New Zealand government. It's crap. But it wouldn't really matter who's paying the lawyers, it's him against you. No, and my my lawyers are independent lawyers, not governed by the government at all. The, the way they get their money was because I took a loan out of le legal aid. Right. And I, they, I have to pay that money back. Just to clarify this for me, mm. so if you get legal aid, do you have to pay it all back or a percentage of it back? It's capped at a, a, a figure. Do you want me to say the figure? No, no, no. But for argument's sake. Well, it's, it's capped for a reason, and that's because I can't afford to take – I can't afford to fight these guys. It's not America. I, I don't get any – you can't just come over and throw your – in New Zealand, you can't just come over with a whole ton of money and throw – copious amounts of lawyers at somebody and shut them down. New Zealand doesn't allow that. So they have a safety net in case that happens. It doesn't mean that my lawyers are any different than if I did have money. It's just that the government says, look, we have a, a safety net for people who can't afford lawyers. Uh, and there's quite a few lawyers that work for that money. But when okay. you get up now, to the... Is, is that basically to say that everybody who who is um, accused in New Zealand is entitled to a defence? That's right. Right. Yeah, so these okay. big guys can't come over and squish us. Well, not one-sided anyway. No, it's a fair game. So yeah. what it really comes down to is that Stephen didn't know this and he was trying to throw his weight around with his scammer money. And when we stood up to him, that was when he decided he couldn't win. And they started trying to negotiate with stupid things. I mean, this went on for okay. two or three months. Yeah, Stupid things happened with the, the fake lawyer. You know, people, it really weird things. Like my website was getting a denial server attack. Um, 
I even that road rage incident incident where the guy chased me around the town for I don't think it was connected. The guy's got locked up. <laughs> Today, the policeman rang me and he said the guy's in jail. Tonight he's in jail. Yeah, I I, I yeah. would assume that wasn't connected. Well, I hope it wasn't, but uh, <laughs> yeah. just on Monday night, I'm driving down and I've got this big four wheel drive guy tooting and right up my ass the car <laughs> and, and I didn't do anything. And I said to Helen, get ready to call the police. Uh, I didn't know what was happening. And so you do, the, and also there's, there's videos out there. We've got a, um, a screenshot video of him actually saying that he's going to hire a hitman and he's going to, um, uh, well, there was, um, a lady called Phantom who was in the FUD group and we don't know whether it's a lady or a man, but he said that he, he was talking to someone saying that he was going to hire a hitman, pay them $20,000. And then her car was miraculously going to be bumped off the road. And that's literally what they said. And, and that might sound really far-fetched, and whether it's true or not, you know, we don't know. But then um, there was, you know, like Cindy Piper's been saying she's been getting threats. But we actually had them. Then Natalie, this fake lawyer, comes in here, comes back with an 11-minute conversation, which we've got on record, claiming that Stephen McCullough was tricked into saying these things. And the hitman was actually phantom tricking him into saying things, not knowing that he was being recorded, and that would stand up in court as his defence. So we literally got a conversation with Stephen McCullough saying that he was, you know, you know, and then we've got other conversations with Stephen McCullough saying, talking to Cindy, basically saying that if he was going to hire a hitman to do her off, he would rather hire one to do me off. So it's all stupid shit, but at the end of that, it's just silly threats from a guy that's trying to throw his weight around. He's like the schoolboy. He's like a school. You're like the schoolboy bully, and I'm David and he's Goliath, and I don't even think he's got any money. So you know, I've got other things which are really cool, which I really want to do the video. Like he's selling I'm, his house at the I'm moment. I'm confused, but yeah, yeah, I think a lot of people will be. But it's a quite a victory. Um, the one thing I am pleased about, hopefully, um, I've got a lot of fingers and pies with the media. And I've got quite a lot of people um, working with me. I've got, I'm going to be on Radio New Zealand next month on another matter, but it's kind of related to this as well. And also, I've got the head guy in the stuff newspaper who does all the um, the cyber crime stuff. And I've worked with him busting another scam. He he's asked, um, you know, if he can have the story. And I've also got another one, I think it's called Lioness, which is a, an American organization which is going to do my press releases for me. And then also I can go back to hopefully the reporter that did my article in the New York Times. Once I get all these videos online explaining the whole, each of the dirty, disgusting tactics that he used, it's, I think it's going to be a fantastic story. And then they're saying that the reason I'm doing this is because I, I just want to be uh, a famous YouTuber. I'm going, yeah, hell, bring it on. Do you? Yeah, <laughs> that's good. All right, let's listen to the rest of his jumbo gumble. And uh, the, the reason that uh, we withdrew was because we knew that um, under the circumstances it was going to be a lot easier to go ahead and bring that suit into a, another jurisdiction, which we're doing right now. And uh, Jurisdiction. So they've withdrawn the case in New Zealand. Hour and a half before the court case started. Okay. Well, the, and Sorry, I should, haven't explained security for costs. If, you, if you're going to sue somebody in New Zealand and you're an overseas punter uh, and you're claiming that you're going to sue them for $3.8 million, and let's say it all fell over for Stephen and he didn't get his money, or let's say it all, I was correct and he was wrong, in New Zealand you pay... Um, for the other people's legal expenses. So my lawyer said, look, modestly... If you, if you lose. Yeah. So my lawyer said, look... Or, or withdraw? Yes. Okay. So you need to put money in the kitty. You know, if he's... My lawyer said this could be a six-week trial because we had to watch 10 hours of video. So they said that to the judge that we want them to put $150,000 into a trust fund. So we asked the lawyers to do so, and they said, no, 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 we don't need, um, we don't need, you don't need to put security up for cost. So then we had to do an affidavit to the high court judge, which is when I printed out the 217 pages to give the judge a flavor 
of the criminal activities that this guy has done. And um, and then we were requesting that the judge award us what we were asking, $150,000 or more. So we gave them examples of other similar cases that went into the three to $400,000 price range. So the judge on the court day could have awarded us more money than $150,000. Well, right. It's not necessarily awarding it to you, though, is it? It's, no. it's asking for an amount of money to be put into an account to hold it on the off chance that the person bringing the claims loses. Yeah. And right. if he's okay. trying to go for $3.8 million, um, you know, and when we ask for that money, and this is why I want to do a whole series of videos about it, when we ask for that money, they come back and said actually they've made a mistake. They said they made a mistake and they meant to have only sued me for $500,000, not $3.8 million. They made a mistake. This is their lawyers. And I'll tell you what, mate, these lawyers are shockingly bad. Their correspondence was like I could have wrote it. That's why I was starting to wonder if these guys are really involved. So my lawyer said, oh, my God, really? You made a mistake? It's already lodged in the New Zealand High Court that you're trying to sue Danny DeHeck for defamation for $3.8 million, and now you're telling us on the side, by the way, we've actually sued you for the wrong amount. We've made a mistake with the paperwork. This is theoretically my lawyer saying they've spent $150,000 preparing the case, and now they say they've made a typo and got it all wrong. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So that was part mm. of the thing. So, uh, yeah, so that was quite cool. So obviously that didn't work. We just boxed on, as my lawyer said, and we just carried on asking the judge to award us. So we had to sort of put an affidavit out there to say that, because my lawyers come back and said to me, Gandhi and Jesus Christ – would have to pay security for costs. And there's no way that Stephen McCullough is going to take a New Zealand to the court without paying security for costs. But if you want us to go through the whole ragmarole of doing so, we will do it. So that's where I learned a lot more about the New Zealand court system, which is fantastic. I'm really educated now. Yeah, you yeah. probably know a lot more than I do. So I took along my double-sided printing to the uh, <laughs> court, <laughs> and they, they said they didn't yeah. want that. And then they, uh, I had to get it reprinted. I did a whole video about that. I had 18,000 people look at it. Do you know how much money I made from that? <laughs> $10 I made on my YouTube <laughs> channel. Because people think I'm just doing this for YouTube clicks. $10 for one video that received. How much did the printing cost you? 400 Excellent. I yeah. there's a great Which rate of return there. Which Stephen is actually going to pay now. Because that's my sundry cost. Okay, right. Has that been awarded yet? Or are you this, hope that it um, What's today? It's Friday tomorrow. It should be, I think it's on the 7th of next month. Was that July? It must be July next month. Yeah. All right. So on the 7th of July, what happens is my lawyers go to their lawyers and they try to say, well, this is how much we've spent. Pay up. If they say, oh, no, we don't want to pay that amount, then the judge will decide the, the, the amount of money that they pay for our legal expenses. So, but the funny thing about it, which I haven't really mentioned, let's just listen to the end of this video here and just get the last of Stephen trying to say whatever he's trying to say, and then we'll see what happens, eh? It's, it's really in a point where uh, he's going to have a big surprise waiting for him. Um, but uh, no, I mean, in, in no way did we lose anything. We, we, we threw the case in New Zealand because it was a, I mean, it was an absolute, there's going to be an absolute massive long fight under their under their legal system, whereas uh, under a different jurisdiction it would be much easier and uh, it would be a, a much simpler um, scenario. So that was what our legal team decided. So there were a couple of things in there. One was he talks about another jurisdiction. Mm. And the other one, he talks about there was going to be a long fight. But hadn't if if the motion or whatever it is to withdraw the case had had that not occurred, would the trial have started on that day or not? No, no, they would have. Um, they would have basically asked them to award the cost, and also my lawyers had asked for a date. So this could have, oh, gone, this okay. could have gone on for years. Oh, really? Yeah. And also there's a queue of getting into the high court. Oh. 
Yeah, but you know we were prepared, and and at the end of the day, I mean, I was sort of gagged in the meantime, where I couldn't really speak about this guy and his dirty tactics. I mean, since he he was announcing a merger, he's also announcing a fish farm, which is a really good video to watch if you want to learn about fish farming. Um, but every merger that he's talked about doing was. Um, held up because he couldn't announce it to anybody because of what was happening with Danny De Heck. So he's using me as a scapegoat for everything that was happening with the company. How how was any of that related to you? Because I was going and destroying the deals that he was getting together. So going by people who used well, to... Well, that's what... Is, is that what people are saying? Well, that's what they, they were alleging I was doing. Right. So, for okay. example, they had some seminar planned at some conference, and I had theoretically rung up the conference, pretending I was one of their workers, and cancelled the whole event. Aye. That's what they said. I didn't even know they were having this event, but now it did give me some good ideas. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, and also the merger. He's been talking about this merger. Now, this merger's been happening for ages. Now, they've come out with this other thing, and I'm not sure if this is trying to bait me for a mistake, but they've got this company called FourthStar.com, and it's a clone of Luna One. And the same people, you've got Corey and you've got Lee, uh, the same people that were in Luna One, and they've also got this girl that's meant to be doing virtual reality singer. So today I reached out, well, over the last week, we've been reaching out to this girl saying, are you aware that this fourthstar.com thing that you've got your name all interlaced with, because they're saying that they have partnered with her, mm -hmm. are you aware that this is a scam and it's a clone of Luna One? They've even got a thing on their website saying that their coin is going to be released at 30 cents, just like Luna One. Ah, right. And it's who, a, who was going to release it? Well, this 25. fourth. Yeah, 25 was Luna 1. Yeah. So now they've upped the ante and they're going to release this coin at 30 cents. So there's another guy called um, Shark. I've forgotten his name, but Shark Ivan from Shark. Not Shark Tank, but Shark. Yeah. I, sorry, Ivan, I forgot. Now he did a video that got looked at by 25,000 pe 25, people in three days. Yeah. His name was on this website claiming that he had partnered with them. Now, originally, and he didn't know them from a bar of soap, he was made aware of it, and he went, what? I don't know these guys from a bar of soap. Now, Luna One originally had claims that they were partnering with Coca-Cola, and they had a whole list. I've got them on screenshots, which I'm going to bring out, mm -hmm. but they've got all these alleged people they're partnering with. So when we saw this young girl who's a singer saying that she's partnered with fourthstar.com and she's going to be their virtual reality singer we reached out to her to say hey hey i don't know if you know but this could be this could ruin your name this could tarnish your representation so this morning I, I tweeted you know a warning out to her 10 minutes later i was blocked 20 minutes later everybody that was in my telegram group except one person which we're using as a backup, all their accounts were blocked. So they've been monitoring us and our comments in our own Telegram group, and prevention's better than a cure. So they're blocking people from communicating on her um, Twitter account. Right. Okay. So what I'm getting at is this guy hasn't stopped, but because of what I've been doing, he's actually running for the hills, We've got a photo of him putting his house on his Facebook page, and he took it off quite quickly afterwards. But his $3 million house is now up for sale, claiming he needs to downsize. He's off to Dubai to do some seminar of some sort. We actually think he's on the run. And if he's got any money left, or any scammer money left, we think he's going off to Dubai. And that's what I think he's doing now. The merger that he's been talking about doing, we aren't sure, because we never really read it anywhere, that he's theoretically merging with Fourth Star, which was meant to be three times better than what he currently had. But this fourth, go to fourthstar.com forward slash WP hyphen admin, hit enter, and you'll see it's a WordPress website. So we're talking about a blockchain 
company with tokens and coins and logins and they're using a WordPress website. I don't know what Luna One was built on, but WordPress is not a good platform for a high tech company. It's just, it looks like this is actually an exit strategy. And that's why I want to go to town on these videos. I want to show that this guy, we've exposed him, David the Little Wee YouTuber, even though my name's Danny, Goliath who claims to be in the um, have enough money to be listed in the Forbes billionaire list. They were looking at his assets with um, Apollo Fintech. And th this is what he said, not me, <laughs> claiming that um, they were going to look at his assets and then he's potentially going to get listed on the Forbes billionaire list. So this guy was trying to save money in court because it was too expensive to fight these $350 an hour lawyers. And that might be why he's got so much. Yeah, well, yeah, maybe he's thrifty. <laughs> oh, <laughs> maybe we could learn from that. Oh, it does go on. It's really amazing. But it does, um, so my, 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 my issues at the moment is not that Stephen McCullough can sue me again because the New Zealand government will never listen to him, not the government, the New Zealand court system, won't, he won't have a, he can't come back and have another go. And if he doesn't pay the, um, my legal fees, he will never have a shit show in hell at coming back to our courts. He's already wasted the time of the courts and myself and my lawyers. So I've just got a free ticket to actually, if this guy farts at a jam jar, I'll smell it from the other side of the world. All right. Um, other things that are interesting. Ju you just put me off jam for life. <laughs> you know. But anyway, so he's selling his house. Looks like he's off to Dubai to live. Um, he's doing a rinse and repeat, which I think is an exit strategy. Um, and if you have a look at um, uh, Apollo Fintech coin, it literally is worth 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. 0.3. So it's not even worth, you know, 1% of a cent. And there has been a huge amount of money taken out of that. And he claims he's never going to sell his Apollo or his GLX or his tokens, but all three tokens that he has had, I think um, Luna One token, uh, I think it's LN, I forgot what it is, but it's only worth, uh, I think it's worth 1% one, 1 of a cent or 10% of a cent. Or maybe it's one cent, but it's not worth 25 cents. It's not worth, mm -hmm. so people that invested, I've got 42 people that tell me that collectively they have, uh, invested eight hundred thousand dollars. There's meant to be eleven thousand people that have invested in it initially. And our biggest fear, because there's quite a few, um, there's a, the guy, the shark guy I was talking about. His video is very good because he still kind of believed it right up to a couple of weeks ago. I can't believe he never watched any of my videos. But now, you know, he's interviewed us and he wants to expose it. And and the real good thing was I got a, um, I phoned, I was messaging Coffeezilla. Stephen, another Stephen, a good Stephen, and um, he gave me his phone number, and I rang up, and I talked to him for 25 minutes about this whole uh, court case, and, you know, he, he was brilliant, because he said to me, he said, you know, we're, we don't get much help from anyone, we are sticking ourselves out on a limb, and he said that he was offering some advice on how to handle Stephen McCullough. But he actually said to me, he said, look like you're in a really good position. And I, that was the day before I actually went and sat in the courtroom as the judge's eyebrow lifted up <laughs> as he held up the piece of paper and goes, has this been discontinued? And he said, yeah, when was this filed? He goes, oh, an hour and a half ago. And it was crazy. And then I was trying to eyeball the Harmon's lawyer and he wouldn't look at me. But, yeah, I want to I show all the court documents because the negotiation that these guys had was pretty – pretty interesting and also they were trying to negotiate 24 hours before it went to the court they were saying that they would pay my legal fees and then they changed it at the very last minute the very last bit of correspondence saying if 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 i remove my videos and stop harassing his friggin family and i've never harassed his family so it was just ridiculous so my lawyer said let's box on let's go to court and they let us sleep on it overnight. And I'm thinking, I've got all dressed up in my, my Ponzi gear. And I was off to the court. <laughs> and, um, yeah, so it, was, it has been a victory. And it does show you that you can stand up. You know, I don't get the money. Um, I don't get any money from doing this. Um, I am hoping to build a big YouTube channel. I, I got, I'm going to get some amazing media coverage from it. I got to speak to uh, Coffeezilla for 25 minutes on the phone. He's a lovely guy. 
and um, I'm just building my career as a as the crypto Ponzi scheme Avenger. And as I've said in all my videos, I'm here to name and shame anyone running a Ponzi scheme or a scam, and that's all I want to do. And um, and it all ties in nicely with my dyslexia. It ties in nicely with my upbringing as an ex Jehovah's Witness where I used to listen to the elders and the ministerial servants who used to talk on the stage telling us that, that the wicked people are going to be done away with and the righteous people are going to inherit the earth and live forever on a paradise earth. And I used to believe that uh, until the age of 23 when I realized that these people on the stage are out there just manipulating us, gaslighting us into thinking a certain way. And when I watch these scammers like Stephen McCullough, this guy, people say, he says things and people don't research him um, and I get, honestly, uh, I get emails every day from people telling me how much they invested in some scam, how much they lost, can I help get their money back, and I just see it's rampant at the moment. And if, if I'm brave enough to get myself in front of the camera, even if I do get sued for $3.8 million, I will do it, because I've got, that's, that's what I think it's all about. I want to get these scammers and get them off the street and create public awareness. So yeah, so... How about that, Stephen McCullough? I, I, I took down um, Goliath with a legal aid from the government. You have to a pay legal it back. aid slingshot. I have to pay that back at $15 a month. Mate, you won't be able to afford it. Mm, that's a bottle of wine. No, if you want to help with legal, <laughs> with Danny's legal cost, then yeah. please. I don't know. Yeah, but anyway, I'm going to go through, I, I, I'm going to come up with a wee bit of a template. don't want to bore people too much. I know this is a long video. It's probably going on for a bit longer than we hoped. One hour exactly, Rob. We've outdone ourselves. Time to wrap it up and you can... I'd like to go now. Come back <laughs> with the rest of other videos. Yeah, no, that'd be cool. So anyway, I had a bit of a monkey on my back and I asked Rob to come around and help me get it off the... Um, oh, there he is. It's called Steven. Get off me. Get off me, Steve. Steve, Steve, get off me, you mongrel. You mongrel. <laughs> Is that funny? Oh, I think it's funny. Yeah. So, in saying that, before I just say thanks for listening, thanks for watching, if you know anything about Stephen McCullough, if you have worked for Stephen McCullough, Luna One, Apollo Fintech, uh, anything to do with hyper technologies, if you are one of the miners working in the mine, digging up the gold, because remember, he's got a visitor center. Oh, I didn't tell you, his bank. Mm. He had leave, a, leave that for another video, oh, the Daniel. Bank, oh, the bank photos. Can't, oh, can't leave yeah. it all out of the bag. Yeah, that's going to be good. So tune in, and thank you for watching, and I really appreciate your comments. Please do hit the bell, subscribe, and you'll be notified when new videos come out. Um, this is Danny DeHeck, a.k.a. the Crypto Ponzi Scheme Avenger, and my sidekick friend here, who's more than just a big bald fella. Nobody. Nobody. Rob Nobody. Just the nobody. All right, smile, Rob.